Mark Durant. Welcome back to the show, Mark. What was the best thing you saw from BYU basketball on Saturday night in that win over San Diego? Well, good morning, guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought it was a, a nice game. I, I like what I'm seeing uh, defensively. BYU holds another team under, you know, 60 points, and uh, they're, they're playing good defense. But, of, of course, the, the great thing about that game was seeing – BYU able to to have success and win a game when uh, Yoli Childs and Elijah Bryant are struggling because that's going to happen from time to time. And uh, TJ had a, just an amazing game, and and also Jasheer uh, Hardnett played very very well. And so I mean, you want to uh, be able to have a lot of different weapons, uh, and when when some weapons aren't working, uh, you're going to need to have some other guys step up. And uh, I think the Obviously, the greatest thing uh, is, is seeing TJ play well, and uh, I think this, that's that's really the the key for BYU to have success, uh, real real success, being really really good. I mean, obviously they're they're good, but uh, to be really really good, having TJ play well would be, uh, I think, a key ingredient. TJ Haas is playing uh, a little more his style, and I think maybe. He was playing within the offense a little more, which was pretty strict. Heath Troy has established some guidelines of what kinds of shots he wants, what kinds he does not. I think that at you know at, at game, what, the last four, 18, 19, 20, and 21 now, for some reason at that point, maybe Heath had a conversation with him. Maybe TJ's just taking and making. I don't know. What's changed for TJ Haas in your estimation in the last four games? Well, no one ever accused me of being a great shooter, so it's hard for me to really relate to uh... – a slump from a shooter like TJ, who's such a good shooter, but uh, it, it, it was a change. I mean, you got to remember, TJ grew up with the greenest light ever to be green. I mean, it was, it was neon green light ever since he was three years old. I mean, it, it, every shot was a good shot. Shoot whenever you can, as much as you can, and and uh, this year, I mean, it's a different team. They, they value each possession. They they want good shots, and uh, I think TJ was kind of in no man's land sometimes you could see it almost when he caught the ball is this a shot i should take uh and if i miss it is he sure going to rip my head off because i took it and there was just some hesitation and and then i think you know it's just a, a slump in his shooting which didn't help any and i think the i think there's a happy medium though guys i mean i think tj can be tj and still you know, not not do anything crazy and be within the offense and and make good shots and take you know high percentage shots. It wasn't just the threes. I mean, TJ would get in the paint and he wasn't finishing at the rim, which was unusual as well. And and you saw some of the great moves he had the other night against San Diego, and and it was all over the court. He was doing everything uh, really well, and so his confidence is back, which is a big factor. But I also think he's he and the coaches have kind of found a, a little sweet spot where he can uh, shoot the sh- shoot his shots and be aggressive and, and maybe take a shot here and there that's not the greatest shot, but it, it's not going to be the end of the world for the team. And and I, I think that that was clearly what he was doing against San Diego, and it was really, really fun to watch. I mean, uh, we all know because we've seen it before what TJ can do, so that, that that's where the frustration came because – we're like, hey, we we know you can do it. What's going on here? And uh, whether it's just coming out of a slump or finding a little more freedom or just getting some confidence, uh, whatever it was, TJ would appear to be kind of back on, on the saddle, and, and hopefully that can continue. BYU basketball radio analyst Mark Durant with us on BYU Sports Nation. Our Twitter question for all of BYUSN today, Mark, is based on BYU basketball's play over the last four games, all wins, how have your expectations for this season changed? How would you answer that question? I mean, I don't think they've changed uh, much as far as the end result. I mean, it's a tough, it's a tough deal. I mean, they're going to have to find a way to get ahead of Gonzaga and St. Mary's. Now, if they can win all those games, uh, that, that's amazing. That's almost going to take a miracle, and that's not a slide on BYU. It's just that. You know, going to St. Mary's and playing there against a great team is going to be hard. And Gonzaga, even though BYU's had success up there, it's going to be hard. I think BYU can realistically expect to beat Gonzaga at home. But, I mean, it's just a hard thing. And so you're going to probably end up being third. And so you're going to have to win the conference tournament. Uh, But I do think uh, my expectations are changed in that I think BYU really has a legitimate shot to win the conference tournament. I think BYU's going to compete like Thursday night. I think they're going to be able to compete and, and give St. Mary's a game. And, and in years past, it hasn't really 
necessarily been the case. I mean, you're thinking, oh, we got to win the conference tournament, but I don't know that anyone really believed that you're going to they're going to win it. But I think this year they're good enough to win the tournament. So I I do have more hope. Now it may end up being the same result, but I think BYU's better positioned, have better players. It's a better game plan, better defense, and I think that they can really have a shot. Now it may come down to guys that it all ends up being the same this year, but it's not the same. And then you go to next year, everyone's back. You plug in some some new good players. St. Mary's loses to everybody, and, and maybe it, maybe the results are different next year. But what I guess I'm trying to say is the trajectory is really nice, and BYU is getting better. But it may not be enough this year. I hope it is. But it's going to be a tough road to uh, to hoe to get uh, to get in the NCAA tournament. It's just 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 the facts. But uh, that's not to say BYU isn't better this year and getting better. Yeah, building. I I think this team's building towards the NCAA tournament next year. This year would be a, a certainly a, an over ex, uh, exceeding expectations. Elijah Bryant struggled a bit on Saturday night, but had a cool story, um, you know, on on uh, the radio with you guys uh, saying. He found Jashir Hardnett during the game and said, I'm struggling, you need to score. What does that say about Elijah Bryant? Because he's playing at a high level, but for him as a captain to say that to Jashir is pretty cool. I love everything about Elijah Bryant. I mean, he's he, he plays the game the right way. I mean, he's not like Jerem at Ward Ball where everything <laughs> he's got he's got to touch the ball every time, shoot the ball. I mean, he's a black hole out there on the in, in the I'm more, I'm more like Nick Emery. <laughs> I mean, I I never ever have thought, well, that really was not a shot Elijah should have taken, or he's he needs to give the ball up more or uh, shoot less. I mean, it, even when he gets thirty points, I, it's almost a surprise that he has it. It's like, wow, he you know he didn't really take a lot of shots, and he did it within the offense, and still distributed the ball nicely. He, he's just uh, he's really interesting to watch. He reminds me of my brother Devin a little bit in that it's just so smooth and. Doesn't seem to sweat. The teams used to be so mad at my brother Devin because he, not only would he kill him, but he seemed like he never sweated. And uh, and Elijah's that kind of guy. He's just smooth, calm, uh, not a lot of emotion. Uh, and, and like I said, doesn't demand the basketball and doesn't uh, hog the basketball. He's always looking for his other guy. So that doesn't surprise me when I hear a story like that about Jasheer because – uh, you know, if if the Santa Clara game, if Yoli's hot, first ten minutes, get the ball to Yoli. It's not about uh, Elijah make sure, making sure he gets his shots. But the amazing thing is, even though he doesn't do that, he doesn't uh, demand the ball. He ends up having amazing games, and uh, that's a credit to him and the way he plays and his fundamentals and his smoothness. And I mean, he's one of my favorite players in a long time to come along. Just the way he plays, it's it's really fun to watch. All right, Mark, great stuff, man. We look forward to the showdown between BYU and St. Mary's in Moraga at McEwen Pavilion. I take it you'll be there, correct? No, because I'm a big-time lawyer. I'm going to miss this one. That's hard on me. It's hard. I mean, I'd love to see that game, but uh, Terry Nash will be there on the radio with Greg, and I'll certainly be listening and watching. And and uh, I'm, I'm hoping for a win. I mean, uh, St. Mary's, as good as they are, uh, is vulnerable. We saw that with Pacific and with BYU at home, and I think BYU is better and can really give them a game. All right. We we wait and watch. It's the slowdown Jock Landale project. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. I, I don't know what you do with Jock. I mean, you take him <laughs> away and you leave shooters open. That's It's, it's like uh, with BYU with TJ. If you got three guys, it's hard to stop them. With two, maybe, but they've got so many weapons, it's hard to pick what you want to try and stop. Good grief. All right, Mark, great stuff, man. We'll get let you get back to uh, your important work. And, uh, it's we'll, not as important. We'll discuss uh, your <laughs> option as, uh, you know, to be on retainer or not for BYU Sports Nation moving forward. So All that's right, still I'll on the table. Some documents. All right, man. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> See you guys.